Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Yeah, so but I'm trying. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the scripture. Standing with the eleven, he raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus who you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away. Everyone who the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. <clears throat> so those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Yeah. The 
based on is taken from Psalm 116, verses 1 through 3, and 10 through 17. I loved the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. The cords of death entangled me. The work of the grave took hold of me. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, I pray you to stay with my life. How shall I repay the Lord? I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. Precious is the sight of the Lord. Oh Lord, I am your servant. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and all of the day of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the midst of all the people in the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of the people, Second is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 to 23. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb, without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love. Love one another deeply from the heart, you have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God, the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Now, on that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, <clears throat> whose name was Clopas, answered him, <clears throat> excuse me, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that he had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. Mm -hmm. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us, while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
I speak in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sorry, I keep getting froggy. I thought that the top had all walked away. That's wrong. Apparently, it's not like today. So, what a wonderful gospel story. It almost preaches itself, doesn't it? It's, it's just so rich. So much to think about. And of course, there's that line, the one of the ones I just love in this gospel. May not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. John Wesley, famous Methodist, says, When are our heart being burning? What do we fire? And so, how do we find this fire? It's a wonderful story, and I really love it. And sometimes I think it's because I like to walk and think. Uh, but then I have to think, well, there's some fire it has to be here somewhere. So sometimes we just walk. We're not actually thinking. We're taking in everything that's around us. The trees, the birds, the people, the clouds. It's just kind of a time. So let ourselves let go of the stress. Let something else enter into our lives. And so identifying with the disciples walking along the road from Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Emmaus, is easy for us in some ways. We know that when we talk with our friends about things that have been disturbing us, we feel that. Nobody's come up with a solution. Maybe I'm a person by Jesus because I was worried about it. But they were able to talk it through, to begin to try to make sense of things. That's what enjoying each other's company is about and wrestling with all the things in our lives, just as they wrestled with the events that occurred in Jerusalem. The death of the one they hoped was sent by God to be the Messiah, the one to deliver Israel from bondage. How could they make sense of this? I think if we are deeply honest with ourselves, we are like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, and we are continually wrestling with and trying to comprehend the mystery of the crucified and risen one. Our soul work to me is to be open to deepening our understanding and enlivening our faith, finding that fire again. Frederick Bigner, priest and theologian, wrote about the Emmaus experience like this. He said, I believe that whether we recognize him or not, or believe in him or not, or even know his name. Again and again, he comes and walks a little way with us along whatever road we're following. And I believe that through something that happens to us, or something we see, or somebody we know, who can ever guess how or when or where, Jesus offers us the way he did at Emmaus, the bread of life. He offers us new hope, a vision, a new vision of light that not even the dark world can overcome. We seek this this morning, that light that the dark world cannot overcome. So as life explodes around us in the spring of the year, 
we're given the opportunity to observe once again the coming to life so evident in and through nature. It is easy to pass this by in our busyness and haste. It is too easy to encounter one another and move on without allowing ourselves to share deeply and to encounter Christ in our midst. The letter of Peter reminds us to love one another deeply. Love one another deeply. I really find this a community where we do strive to do that. We do strive to love one another deeply. But I'm very generous, including the we. And it's, it's not just a word of it. And our loving emerges from listening really listening to one another and to all that is around us in creation. We're often surprised, inspired. Our hearts may even burn within us when we take this kind of walk. The walk we are so metaphorically always on. And the, and the, the real walks that we take. So there's a, a both in the things. There's a kind of spiritual walk, and there's a real one. We just walk around the garden. That's a wonderful place. And who knows when it's been through sense. That grace of God, that life, that hunting within you will be found again. And you will once again be lifted just a little bit. And walking can be a very holy thing. Uh, it's interesting to me that Phil Hummel did a whole essay on walking, and it begins by reminding us of the rule of the way for something. Something. Holy earth. Holy earth. And so something means to take a holy time on the earth. We're not used to just doing that. We almost have to give ourselves permission. I'm there to be one which you know for almost 50 years or so. He loves to walk. But I confess that he knows that it drives me nuts that he has to get that 10,000 steps or whatever it is he's trying to get. So that is not to be. A holy walk, right? For me, it's a little bit of a rush, a stress. So I said, Will you go ahead and walk? I'll just take my time here, mostly walk. It's interesting, the contrast, but the temptation really, really, you know, I was given one of these dreadful Apple watches, <laughs> and it tells me how many steps to take, right? So my temptation is. A laughter, but as I was reflecting on the news, I said, Oh, it's okay. So I want to give you permission this morning. It's okay for us to take our time to allow conversation and to allow what inner friends come into our consciousness. If those disciples on the road to Emmaus, now that they, the scripture even tells us it's seven miles. Okay? Yeah. Now, if they were making a 20 minute mile, right, or a 15 minute mile, I don't think that stranger would have been so excited about walking. <laughs> but they were obviously walking along and talking to one another, trying to understand life's events. And God is in their midst. Another scripture says, when two or three are gathered together, there are in their midst. An example of this, early in my ministry, I came to know what I would call one of the Alexandria's very special characters named Jimmy. And for those of us who welcome Jimmy into our offices and churches, we quickly learned that he was water phobic. And Jimmy was sort of quasi homeless, I'll explain. But he was definitely water phobic. His family tried to move him off the streets, but he'd been so emotionally wounded by some of his life experiences that he preferred to simply sleep 
in the doorway of the family member's home. We refused to shower. Hence, Jimmy came with a certain, shall we say, aroma. <laughs> that was very powerful. One day, Jimmy came to see me, and you know, I'd see him on the street a lot, and I was wondering if we could I talked to him about, did he get any benefits, disability, whatever. He wasn't sure. So I said, well, let's go down to the social service office and try to register you for whatever benefits you have or clarify about what you were able to have and for your family to help you. So he agreed. And I thought, okay, oh, oh my, how are we going to get to the social security, which is the social service office? If I put Jimmy in my car, I may not make it. <laughs> and it wasn't that far. So I said, well, Jimmy, let's take it on the walk. Let's walk to the social security office, which we did. And we're walking down, as you know, Alexandria Mount Vernon Avenue. Well, Delray is very shishy now, but 30, 40 years ago, it's not the thing. So we're walking down on Vernon Avenue. And I'm trying to engage in conversation. There was an odd feeling, but somehow this walk and our conversation started to become a very spiritual experience. I can't quite explain it to this day. Then when we went to the social worker and started to fill out the paper, Jenny was asked his date of birth. And this is where we got sort of a God's eyes on the Jimmy. His birthday was February 23rd, the same day as my father's. There's a whole new personal connection about learning when his birthday was. A bond, something awakened in me about our common humanity. It was no longer just sunny old Jim. But even a more beloved child of God. And it only happened because we walked together, we sat down, and we learned more about one another. And this, I think, is the heart of the Amina story. We know the risen Lord in one another. Risen Lord in the lives, known to us in the scriptures, in the breaking of the bone, and in one another's lives, and in the beautiful village of creation that God has given us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> And now, as we are we will we stand to confess our faith in the words of the Bible. We believe that what God wants,
The people page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our neighbors and for those who are For this community, the nation, and the world. The gathering and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Mark and Gail, our bishops, for Rosemary, our priest, and Hayden, our seminarian, and for all bishops and other ministers, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy and spirit. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and our forever. Pray for all the God that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be put upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on me, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning. There is a lot happening in the life of the community of St. Michael, so I would commend to you the inserts to find out everything that's happening. I will remind you that the men's retreat in West Virginia is this coming weekend. Uh, so if you are looking to go, I will have you email Mark Kane's email to get you all the information that you need. Um, other than that, 
And then I can then that insert to you. Let us walk in love as Christ has loved us and give himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts to be like heaven to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God and his spirit. It is right and good and joyful thanks always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true pastoral lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Thank you. 
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts, sanctified and by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending love in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, honor and glory and yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are born to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, be be Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's eat the feast out of the gift. Gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Repeat out in your hearts by faith in Christ's faith.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 